In this tutorial, I'm going to quickly cover cover how to set up dynamic DNS where DHCP is on one server, DNS is on another server. In this case, DHCP is on the left server, SLES 10, and DNS is running on SLES 11 on the right-hand server. Um, I already configured this in a previous tutorial, um, except that I created the wrong reverse zone, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly add a reverse zone. and edit that and we're going to notice that uh, you can try to allow dynamic updates but if I check this it's going to give me an error that it doesn't have a tsig key so the very first thing that we're going to have to do is create a tsig key after I uh, set up my NS servers for this particular zone so I'll click OK here so let's go ahead and create our tsig key tsig key by default is going to be placed in the SE init D directory give the key a name, ddns is what I'm going to call this one it's going to be called ddns.key and I'll say generate it's created now, it created that file, so now if I go into my zones and edit each of my zones I can select this allow dynamic updates and notice that the key is selected by default that I created and in the case of my reverse zone I'm going to check automatically generate records for this zone and I'm going to do the same thing for the forward zone however um, there is no option down here to automatically populate, populate the records but it does show you that the reverse zone that's connected with this forward zone is correct I'm going to go ahead and say OK to this and now the very first thing that we have to do let's go into our Etsy and Etsy, Etsy name D, D directory and if we list off these files, we've created three files by creating that tsig key. The very first one is this one, this ddns.key. And then these two uh, keys over here, one's public, one's private, were also created. Now, according to the documentation, you're supposed to copy this pu pu public key over to the other server and load it. It doesn't like that one, but it does like the ddns.key. So we're going to send that one over there. SCP ddns.key. I'm going to send it to the same directory that it's created in and over here. Etsy named e dot D. And let's just take a look at the permissions on this key. We have to have it the same over there. So we have 640 um, owned by root and named D as the user and group respectively. And so let's go ahead and make sure that our permissions are correct over here. and we just need the POSIX rights are okay we just need to change the group ownership so now you can see uh, we have 640 owned by root and name D as the root and group respectively I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this and on our screen you'll notice over on this left hand side uh, our DHCP setup in order to configure dynamic DNS you're going to do it on a subnet by subnet level so go ahead and select the subnet you want to modify edit that and you'll notice that down in the bottom right hand corner there's a dynamic DNS button go ahead and click that and we're going to have to very first thing we have to do is browse to that tsig key that we just copied over and we'll add it. Um, if you copied over one of the other keys it'll complain at that point that it does not contain the tsig information and so we'll say OK to this and then we come to this screen we want to enable dynamic DNS for the subnet notice that the forward and reverse zones are using this key um, I'm going to explain this next checkbox here in a minute but first of all let's set up our zones I like suso.com our forward zone and let's point to our primary DNS server and let's put in our reverse zone and it will also point to the forward zone or forward the uh, primary DNS server now if you go ahead and select this update global dynamic DNS settings it will put in the necessary global options for dynamic DNS to work if you did not select this you'd have to do it manually I will select it but I will show you the options that it does create 
So I'll say OK to that, OK to that. Now if we go into the global options right here, highlight that and click edit, um, they will be added, although they haven't yet because I haven't hit OK. Um, if you come into this section and click add, you will get a DDNS update style. Ad hoc is uh, deprecated, so the, let's just go ahead and add it. The update style is interim. And the other option is DDNS updates. Select that box and it's turned on. These are the two that are created that are necessary for dynamic updates to work. Now I'm going to delete them out of here just to show you that when I have underneath the subnet and dynamic DNS, I have this update global option set. It will set those for you automatically. So I'll finish this setup. And if we go and review our Etsy DHCPD.com, let's make sure that this uh, there. You'll notice that DDNS updates is on, and DDNS update style is set to interim. I deleted those before I left, but because that box was checked, it added them. So next step is to tell F our var log messages. Oh, one thing I do want to point out on the DNS side, if you go into var live name D typically underneath the master directory you'll have all your zones um, but once you go and um, configure the zone for dynamic update it gets moved to the dynamic update directory which is DYN and you'll notice that we have our forward and reverse zones here now I am going to because I had a the wrong in adder arpa in there previously I do have some bogus records in there I'm just going to clean that up for my sake but I do want to show you how this works. So now on the DHCP side we're tail effing our var log messages. I'm going to come to my Windows box and do a release. If I can type it correctly. We're going to go ahead and do a renew. Notice that we got our discover and our offer and then we added the new forward map and we added a new reverse map and then the rest of the DHCP continues to do its thing. Now if we come over to this directory and we cat, notice that we have journal files now here and here. Now if I cat my reverse address zone, I do not expect to see it in there yet. I don't see a 10, 10, 10, I can't remember, 80 address in there. Sorry, it'll be 80.10.10.10 in here because uh, the dynamic reconfig hasn't taken place yet. If I were to cap my forward zone, you'll notice that it isn't there either. However, it is in the journal files. Um, if Let's go ahead and just do an NSLOOKUP, and yes, I still use NSLOOKUP. Just change it to localhost, and if we do a john-pc.ilike susa.com, You'll notice that the record is being resolved to that. Let's do a set type equals pointer and type 10, 10, 10, 80. And that does resolve to John PC, I like SUSE.com. Again, if you cat those files, they are not in here. However, the dynamic reconfig takes place within a 15 minute interval by default. Um, usually it's going to be less than that because you're some somewhat into your interval. So if I were to let this sit for 10 to 15 minutes, um, the journal files will remain, but you'll notice that these uh, forward and reverse zones do get updated with the correct information. And I may just pause the video here and wait until that dynamic reconfig takes place and then come back and show you that. Let me go ahead and pause it. Okay, we're back. It was only seconds for you, but for me it was probably about, I don't know, seven, eight minutes or so. Um, I ended up just restarting NameD and that, that was enough. So. Uh, in this directory, let's just go ahead and cat our reverse zone. You'll notice that my PC is now registered within this actual file. That didn't mean it, DNS wouldn't respond to it. It just means that it's actually in this file now, and you can see the physical manifestation of it here. And now if we type our cat our forward zone, you'll notice that John PC also has an A record and a text record is created. 
and so if I were to go ahead and NS lookup on this thing again it will uh, go ahead and respond as it did previously so I don't think that's necessary um, what I'm doing now is just on my AMD master I'm oh, sorry slave if I were to cat this on the secondary server, I do not expect this information to be over here yet. Oh, there it is on this, on the reverse at least. Cat, and my forward is actually over there too, so it's already synced over to my secondary servers too. I did see a. Um, if you go look at our var log messages um, before I restarted this video we did have named e go and do his own transfer as you can see here and uh, I believe it just did it not too long before restarting this video so that's why they show up anyway that's just a quick tutorial on how to go ahead and set up dynamic DNS and thank you for watching